Okay, we're back. This is a quick video on the use of files. The reminder is pretty simple. If your program does input, there must be a source for the input. There must be a destination for the output. By default, or is standard, that the input comes from the keyboard. We designate that by saying CIN as the source of all inputs. Also, the destination of output is always is by default or standard the screen. CEIN is called standard input. C out is called standard output. When we use files, we are adding another option as to the source and destination. So we're going to do a very simple program. Now I want to remind you that when you're doing work in Unix, it makes sense to do work in the directory, in a specific directory. So if you're doing a program, you should do it in a directory called 3014C. This directory has been created for you. All right. And what we want to do here is to uh, do a little program. Let me bring the program up. Here's the program. I've already written the program using standard input and output. So basically the program will read and echo three values, an integer, a float, and a string. Our first version, as you see here, is going to be from the keyboard to the screen. So if you look at the code, we need our variables. We need to do the reading. So we prompt for and read the three values. And then we're going to display the values back on the screen to verify that we have read them. So with this, let's go ahead and compile this program. I'm compiling and I'm giving the name of the executable the letter R instead of A.out. It's just easier to work with. So to run it, I say dot slash r instead of dot slash a dot out, and I enter 1, 1 1.5, and cat. We see that we have successfully echoed out the inputs. That is, we have read the inputs. Now let's change, go back to the program, and let's deal with b. This time I want to read the input from the keyboard and I want to write it to a file. And the file that I want to write it to is called echo.dat. Okay? Now, what does this mean? This means that instead of writing the output to the screen, it's going to be written to a file. So how do we deal with files? First of all, you must include a library that expands beyond standard input and standard output. IO stream gives you CN and Cout. We need a whole different stream that gives us the ability to deal with files. The name of that stream, that um, library is called fstream. And with fstream, we are able to declare files. All right, how do you declare a file? You declare it by saying the data type is if um, of stream, and this means an output file stream. Say it a different way: it's an output stream that can be attached to a file. So let's call it out f. I put the capital F to remind me that it's, an, it's a file-related stream, and. First time out, let's go ahead and attach it to the file we want to use. The name of the file we said is echo.dat. So this declaration does two things. It declares a stream and it attaches, declares, create out of stream and attach to file echo.dat. That's what we've done here. Having done this, it means we can now um, direct output not to C out. Notice that this says C out. 
I can now simply replace the name of the stream. I don't need to change anything else. What's the name of the stream? It's not C out anymore, it's out F. That's where we want it to go. And the last little thing we have to do is when we're all done, we have to break the connection. We break the connection by saying, here's the name of the stream, and let's close it. So this basically disconnect from file, output file. We do that by closing. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we're going to create a file that did not exist before. So let's um, close this. Let's take a look at what files are present. Notice we have a, a small number of files. We do not have a file called echo.dat. When we compile the program and run it, if we're successful, we will get such a file. So let's compile it. All right, let's run it. So an image is going to be 2, 5.9, and please. All right. Notice a couple of things. First of all, the output that we got to the screen before, the, ec the echo, does not appear on the screen anymore because we sent it some other place. Where did we send it? To a file called echo.dat. So let's take a look to see what's in echo.dat. To see what's in a file, the command can be more echo.dat. And with it, we see that the, the echoed output is in fact going to this file. All right, see how simple it was? Now it's your turn. Let's now read input from an input file. Okay, and let's see what's going to happen. So what kind of stream do we need to do an input file? Well, we need an input file stream. So we're going to say input file stream. And let's go up here. We're going to read it from a file, from a file called um, read2.dat. And we're going to echo it um, to file echo.dat. Okay. Good with that? So what's required? Let's, let's see what we did for the output. For the output file, we created a stream called outf. So what do you think a good name for the input stream is? nf. Okay. What's the name? Read2. Dot dat. So we're going to create input stream and attach it to file read to dot dat. All right. Now let's do the other stuff. This is basically making an attachment. The attachment has to be broken at the end, so we need to break it. So what must we say? Break the file that's attached to the input stream. And so what do we have to change? Remember when we did the output, when we no longer went to C out, we had to change the stream name C out to the new stream name out F. So what must we do here? We must change it from C in. We're not reading from the keyboard, so we must just change the stream. So the stream is what? NF, I-N-F. And everything should work as it did before. Uh -oh. So let's give it a shot. Let's see. Let's compile it. Hit compile. Let's run it. And mm, something funny happened here. Hmm. Let's take a look. Did we produce an output? Let's see, take a look at the output. Where's echo.dat? More echo dot echo dot dat. What's in there? 
Oh, what do we call this? What do we call all this? Huh? 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 I think we just call that garbage, don't we? So what has happened? Well, where was the data coming from? It was coming from a file called read2.dat. Do you see such a file? Do you see such a file? No. So it sounds like we need to create a file and put some data in it. So how can you create a file? It's just it's just a file. So you can say pico read2.dat. And what do I need to put into it? I need an integer, 25. I need a folk, 4. And I need a string. I'm going to call it pi. Okay? And with that, we can save it and get out. Now let's run the program again. Notice I don't have to compile the, the, the issue was with the data. So I can say dot slash r. And now let's see what's in that file. We can say more um, echo dot dat. And what do we have? Well, we have the data that we had entered. So it's time to shut this down. What have we learned? We've learned that we can change the source or destination by defining streams. Those streams have to be defined using the fstream library. The data types for the streams are either if stream, which means input file stream, or of stream, output file stream. You have choice over what you call these streams. Nf and outf are variables, but they are variables of data type stream. They are capable of being connected to a file. Uh, and I've shown you a simple way of connecting things to files, and we've demonstrated that we can read from a file, we can write to a file. So with that, we are going to um, get out of our program. I'm going to put it in the repository so you guys can look at it. And with that, we have a head start on working with files.